Good morning and welcome to worship. We are doing things just a little different this morning. We will have um, just a couple minutes where you can listen to some amazing music, check out some stuff going on in the life of the church, and then we're going to actually begin worship. So if you need an extra cup of coffee, if you're still getting ready, if you're trying to figure stuff out, listen to the beautiful music, center yourself, get ready for worship. Good morning, church. Welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Lisa, the pastor here at the Montrose United Methodist Church, and I want to welcome you to our second Sunday in Advent worship. It is December 6th, 2020, this bizarre year in which we are still worshiping virtually. And so whether you are joining us this Sunday morning or you're watching this later, we're so glad that you're here. If you take just a second, um, you might be able to let us know that you were worshiping with us by uh, putting a comment in the Facebook section if you're worshiping with us on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, we solicit your comments as well. We might not get quite the feedback there, but we're so glad that you're here. Friends, I've invited the Coddington family to join with us this morning, and they're going to light our Advent candles. We light the candle of hope from last week, and then we join it with the candle of love for this week. So without further ado, here's the Coddington family lighting our candles. We gather on the second Sunday of Advent to light the candle of love. Last week, we lit the candle of hope. This week, we light the candle of love, because God loves that shines the brightest through the season of Christmas. We light the second candle, the candle of love. The light shines onto the world, reminding us of God's love. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness cannot overcome the light. The light drives away the darkness, just as love can drive away hatred and apathy. We are filled with the light and the love of God. This, this is, is the day, day the Lord, Lord has made. made. We shall rejoice and give thanks in it.
Our Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Isaiah is calling on God for comfort and kindness. We hear his words echoed later in our gospel reading from Mark, who is speaking about John the baptizer. Here is good news and a call to action for the people of Isaiah's time and for us today. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of God endures forever. You who would bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Here ends the reading. This is the word of God for all the people of the world. of celebration. It's a time to rejoice in Jesus our Savior. We can celebrate Jesus in many ways. One of those is through music. The music playing right now comes from miles and miles away. Technology allows the sound to be transmitted from one location, travel along radio waves, over great distances, and then be picked up by this little radio behind me. We have many means today of hearing the music we want to hear. The radio, CDs, iPods, the internet. Music can be recorded and then go out from anywhere to almost anyone. There was a time though when people hadn't figured out the technology to record music or how to send music over radio waves. If you wanted to hear music, you had to go to a concert or play the music yourself. If you wanted to share a song with a friend, that friend actually had to be in the room with you. Radios and other technology allow us to share music or discussions or news easily because some things are just too good to keep to ourselves. We should strive to be radios for Jesus. The good news of Jesus Christ isn't meant to be kept locked inside your heart. It's meant to be celebrated and shared with other people. It needs to be broadcast out into this world so that others can meet Jesus and join in on the celebration. If we could do that, it would be music to God's ears. This week, our youth will be bringing a message of hope to all of you guys in our congregation. They'll be delivering another package similar to what we did with the popcorn a few months ago. So be on the lookout on your front porch porches this afternoon 
for a message of hope from our youth. Thank you. Please join us for this prayer. Most loving God, we need your love today. Around our world, there is still warfare, starvation, sickness, and poverty. There is so much need for so many people. Send us your love that we might have a will to make a difference for good. Most loving God, we need your love today. Within our communities, our friendships have been torn apart. There are so many hurtful words being shared with little thought. Send us your love that we might have the will to make a difference for good. Most loving God, we need your love today. Our hearts and minds are troubled and confused by all that is going on around us. We want to do the right thing, but some days it's not clear to us. Send us your love that we might have a will to make a difference for good. Most loving God, we need your love today. We know Jesus teaches us your way. We know Jesus' love can change the world. Send us the love of Jesus and help us build a world of love. Amen. Amen. Hello, my name is Becky Pendergrass, and I'm the chairperson for the Missions Committee here at the Montrose United Methodist Church. I want to speak with you about Advent. Advent is the season of hope and expectation. The first day of Advent is the first day of the church calendar, and it begins a four-week period of preparation in anticipation of the birth of Jesus. Advent season is all about reflecting on how we can prepare our hearts and homes for Christ's birth in the world as it is today. It is a time for faith communities and families to remember through prayer, reflections, special music, and good deeds what the true meaning of Jesus' birth is. This Advent season here in the Montrose United Methodist Church, you will have the opportunity to provide a good deed to our community with your offerings. The two opportunities are Encore. Encore stands for the United Methodist Committee on Relief in the Global Humanitarian and Development Organization of the United Methodist Church. 100% of the donations are directed to an earmarked project, our relief effort. Encore is categorized into three major areas, humanitarian relief and disaster response, sustainable development, and global health. Our number two Advent offering will go to the support of the Sharing Ministries Food Bank. It is a non-profit food bank serving Montrose and surrounding counties. Their vision is to ensure that all people in the southwestern part of Colorado will have access to nourishing food that is provided in a manner that promotes com compassion, self-sufficiency, self-respect, and the dignity of the individuals. While this year, our Advent season looks much different for all of us with no indoor Christmas services. We still invite you to watch our online services and to make your donation to these two projects. If writing a check, please write Advent in the description. May you be blessed during this special season of Advent. Our Gospel reading contains the words of Isaiah 40, as we hear from John the Baptizer, who is a cousin of Jesus. This is the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, which does not tell us the birth narrative necessarily, but instead the preparation for the coming of Christ as he begins his ministry. Here is Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to hear him. 
confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore ca clothing of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And his message was this, after me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Here ends the gospel reading, the word of God for the people of God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. It is the second week in Advent, and so we have lit our candle of love, which we finally got to um, stay lit this morning. And we read these texts, one from Isaiah the prophet and the other from Mark, which echoes Isaiah. And it's a curious passage to read during Advent because it is not about the birth of Christ. Well, isn't Advent about the birth of Christ? Yes, yes it is. But if you heard in Mark, it was, this is the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. The beginning of the good news. That starts with the birth, right? Yes, of course it starts with the birth, but it doesn't stop there. And the funny thing about Advent is we go through these motions just like we do in Lent. We know the ends of the stories. We know that at the end of Advent, we will have Christmas and we will celebrate the birth of a baby. We know that's going to happen. And yet we spend four weeks before that pretending we don't know, being all excited. And we wait and we anticipate. And yet we already know Jesus is born. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ really gets going when Jesus accepts his call to ministry. And that starts with a preparation. And it is John the baptizer, the cousin of Jesus. We'll talk a little bit more about him next week, but we hear him call the whole Judean countryside to repentance, and to prepare the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. John, his words are influential because the countryside does come and they do repent and they do prepare the way of the Lord. Well, these words are taken straight out of Isaiah, the prophet, who is talking to the people of Jerusalem, who says, Comfort, oh, comfort my people. Speak tenderly to them. Proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. Be kind. And then a voice of one calling in the wilderness. In the wilderness. Friends, I don't know about you, but this has felt like a little bit of a wilderness. And when we come to this time when we prepare our hearts for Christmas, Ah, this wilderness, even though we have been here many, many times, this year, this wilderness feels much different. Friends, I believe that what Isaiah is saying and that later what John calls us to in this preparing the way of the Lord and making his path straight, it's not all about being perfect and being ready. I think too often we put our eggs all in one basket. We say, Yep, this is how we prepare. We clean the house, we vacuum, we dust, we set everything up, we do the candles, we do the wreaths, we do all the decorating, we bake all the cookies, we bake the special breads, we send out all the greeting cards, and oh, and this year all of that just feels exhausting. It feels like I might make it with two same socks on my feet today, and I might not. I might make it, well, just by making the normal bread I make and not the special Christmas bread. I might make it by buying some store-bought cookies because I just can't even think about spending that time. I don't know. I don't know how you're feeling. But I do know that preparing for Jesus, especially this year, really doesn't look like perfection at all. If we remember that Jesus came for those who are broken, and not those who have it all together, 
<sighs> maybe we breathe a little easier and remember, yeah, yeah, maybe that's me. Maybe I'm a little broken. Maybe I need Jesus in ways I didn't even realize I needed Jesus. And so maybe my preparing the way for the Lord, and maybe my repentance that we're called to, to prepare for the Lord, maybe that repentance looks like repenting of the sin of thinking you have to have it all together, thinking you have to repent of every single sin before. Maybe it's repenting of thinking that you have to have exactly everything perfect and clean and ready, that you have to scrub your heart and scrub your mouth out to be ready for Jesus. Because I think that might be part of our sin, is thinking everything's got to be right. Friends, I am far from getting it right this year alone. <laughs> and I think that's okay. I think preparing for Jesus looks like simply giving my whole heart, which is messy and dirty, just like my home. <laughs> There's laundry on the couch and there's muddy footprints in the hall that I haven't bothered to scrub or vacuum because I know there's just going to be more dogs and more people called my family who will be in my home. And that just looks like opening the door. Jesus, come on in. You got me. All of me. Here's my heart. All of it. It's messy. But <laughs> Lord, you know that. You of all know that. And so maybe the preparation for Jesus this year is not having everything together and pretty and perfect, but maybe it's simply all of you and all of your heart. Lord, I've prepared a place for you. I have prepared a path for you. I have made your path straight. I have opened my heart so you know exactly where to go and what needs healing and fixing and being made whole. As we write, light the candle of love this morning, I think that's what love looks like. For God loves us, all of our flaws and all. There is no you need to be perfect. No, you have to have it all together from God. There is simply, I love you, messiness and all. Dirty laundry, clean laundry not folded. I love you, laundry and all. I love you, whether you make the perfect Christmas cookies or you make none at all. I love you, whether you bake the most beautiful fruitcake or if you don't even like it. I love you, whoever you are, wherever you are. I love you. I think that's God's message to the world at Christmas, but especially when I look at these texts in preparing our hearts for the Christ child and for the Christ who comes to save because they are one and the same. Friends, we have a little bit of home this, homework this week and uh, it's a little different than maybe some of the homeworks we've had in the past, but I want you to think of the ways in which you might repent of the ways you thought you had to have everything perfect and together especially this year. Sit with some of your thoughts and maybe write down all of the things that you really wanted to have planned and prepared and to look a certain way this year that just aren't. And I want you to breathe in the love of God and breathe out all of those notions of perfect or notions of preparedness or planned. I think that, no, I know, I know that Christ comes. Christ arrives even when we don't feel prepared and we're not perfect. I know that when Isaiah talks about God speaking tenderly to the people of Jerusalem and comforting, that is the comfort that God brings. It's for them yesterday and for us today, just wrapping us up in God's arms and saying, I love you no matter what. So this Advent, 
forgive yourself a little bit. Repent of these perfect notions a little bit and prepare your whole heart and give your whole heart to God. Amen. Who are we? We believe in God, whose promise to us is a covenant to always love us, and whose promise is delivered by a baby born in Bethlehem. We believe in Jesus Christ, who is the loving presence of God, who loves us so much he will give up his life for us. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who is the loving presence of God with us today, whose presence empowers us to love others and Jesus loves us. We are the people of God. We are the first United Methodist Church of Montrose, inviting all people to come into the presence of God, welcoming all people into the church of Jesus Christ, going forth 
with a mission to change the world. Amen. Amen. Friends, thank you for joining us for worship this morning. I hope that you'll stick around because we have a couple of announcements for you, some slides and some information about things that we have coming up. We have our Music at Noon concerts on Wednesdays. Just log online and you can check those out. We have Advent devotions that are different options for that. Anybody can reserve a spot for Wednesday night to come by and pick up a pizza and your Advent devotions and take them home. And then um, all the other things that we have going on, there's lots. So just stick around and check out those slides. And I'm thankful that you were here this morning. So friends, as you go from this place, be reminded that you are who God is in love with, no matter whether you're ready or not, prepared or not, laundry filled couches or not. God loves you. God sends Jesus for you. Friends, go and share the love of Christ in order to change the world. Amen.